My name is Hei Si Wong. I am a contemporary visual artist. Uh, I was born in Hong Kong. I participated in the Hong Kong uprising. The main reason I left Hong Kong is because I'm in search of 100% of freedom of artistic expression. I used to say, what do you do? I'm a freedom fighter. The, the Chinese communism is a form of terrorism. I'm into counter-terrorism and my disguise is an artist. The Hong Kong that I love was dead long ago, but I don't want to admit it. And I try to save it, save it and save it. And then until the point that I cannot. So I moved to Taiwan and continue my struggle to liberate Hong Kong. This is what happens to me after that. Back in 2021, after the 47 legislator arrest incidents, that is the ultimate red signal for me to take off because I know the future of Hong Kong will be no law, no order. Well, the Hong Kong that I love is a culturally diverse uh, place. I was born there and uh, we can joke about anything, we can talk about anything, and uh, we enjoy that uh, kind of uh, freedom a lot. That was the Hong Kong I used to enjoy. Well, I chose Taiwan because uh, back then, 2021, I think in May, The Economist met the magazines, uh, front page, there was a picture, the most dangerous place on earth, and that's the map of Taiwan. And that place is Taiwan's Taichung. I thought to myself, that's where exactly I'm, I'll be going. Um, so I applied to uh, come to Taiwan. And then one month later, my name was printed on the Chinese propaganda newspaper. There was a big full page article attacking the Art Development Council. Uh, I was actually one of the examiner inside the Art Development Council at that time. Casey X Wong, in 2019, he was invited to go to Austria to give a TED talk about uh, Hong Kong independence, <laughs> which I didn't. The title of my talk was about uh, art and humor, but obviously the Chinese Communist newspaper don't have any sense of humor. When I look at this place, I, I find it very, very inspiring in terms of uh, my art crea uh, creation. Uh, so ever since I arrived, my art work start uh, changing, uh, adopting uh, various uh, uh, elements of, of Taiwanese, such as uh, its dark history during the White Terror period, or such as uh, temple worshiping culture and uh, is kind of uh, through osmosis influencing my artwork. Yeah. I do all kind of uh, arts, most famously for the um, uh, political performance artwork that I have done during the umbrella movement to anti-traditional movement period. So I dress up and cosplay and, and uh, I uh, join the protesters. Sometimes I, I dress up as, as policemen, sometimes I dress up as Moses or gangster boss. So it's very uh, funny and absurd, reflecting the society that I was living in. But I also do uh, sculptures and uh, installations. Other work, uh, such as the quarantine, uh, this piece of work I created during the uh, covert, not the covert, sorry, the Wuhan Feiyan, the Wuhan virus. Yeah. And the concept is about um, searching for freedom as well as uh, loneliness. So I, the story is about a man stranded on an island and then he was trying to escape. All these things happen in the future after the war. And uh, he was very lonely. And then at the end of the story, he transformed into a half man, half fish uh, creature and finally able to swim away from the lonely island. So I think in a way it's kind of like my autobiography. <laughs> Meaning uh, in order to be free, one must transform. As a citizen, we got a duty.
duty to resist, duty to vanguard, to fight back, and keep an watchful eyes on the government and the police. This is our duty. I think uh, freedom is not like money that you cannot put into the bank and save for future use. Freedom is something that you must use immediately when you have it. 1989, Tiananmen Massacre came. I was a freshman in university. Uh, I still remember I was in the basement washing my laundry and there was a tally at the, at the ceiling. I, and then I saw the tank man. And in my heart at that time, I thought, finally, China can be safe. But I was naive at that time. I thought if China have the money and the riches of just like Hong Kong, meaning they have the cars, they have the building, they have the clothing and the money, then they'll be free. Well, look at China now, they got everything. They got Lamborghini, they got BMW, they got, and all the, also the fake ones. <laughs> they got everything, the skyscraper and the ghost towns, right? But the only thing they don't have, still don't have, is freedom. At first, when um, uh, the British left, we thought, or I thought, okay, maybe it's uh, one country, two system really is working, and uh, finally it's our time, the Hong Konger, uh, to be able to be our own boss. But of course, uh, I think about 10 years later, after 1997, then you know, the Chinese communists uh, took off their mask. When we grow up in, uh, in Hong Kong, we were kind of conditioned uh, in a very strange way by the British. They try to condition us, saying, saying that, hey, actually, you are Chinese, but this is a British colony. So I use chopsticks and drink tea and drink Coca-Cola and soy sauce chicken at the same time. Why not, right? It tastes very good. And of course, when they left, then we thought, oh, okay, when the, we, we, can, we can be our own boss, we can be like true Chinese. So we actually uh, got tricked into that, I think that you know, the Chinese Communist Party would say, okay, you're Chinese, you're like a lost son, come to daddy. But wait a minute, you're like, you're not my daddy? Come on, man. Hong Kong exists even before the Chinese Communist Party. Hong Kong was founded in 1841. So, but nevertheless, they used the word Wei Gui, right, returning home. Okay, so we're like engulfed rather than return. I, during this period, I read a lot of uh, uh, books about decolonization, about Hong Kong, about the history of the British Empire, and also about Chinese philosophy. So I, it took me about five years to kind of decolonize myself. And then I realized my hometown is Hong Kong. I'm not Chinese. I'm a Hong Konger. The exhibition I'm doing in Taichung uh, it's about different aspects of the war. When I look back in Hong Kong, I, um, I think I went through almost a decade of uh, civil uh, resistance. So for me, that is like a war. Most people think war involves guns and military personnel dressing up in fatigue, camouflage. The way I look at it, it doesn't only happen like that. It happens from inside, from your family, from your friends, different opinion, fake news. You know, governments uh, would uh, uh, instigate it from the top down. And then uh, uh, fragmentation in the society. It is a political war, but also a uh, war of the generations. It happens here as well, right? The older generation support Kuomintang and then the younger generation want to support other parties. And then their mindset kind of fix and then create internal uh, quarreling every time when they have a presidential elections <laughs> or local elections. So the same thing happened in Hong Kong. Authoritarian regime, you know, they have the military, they have the arms and the weapons. They, they, are, they are not afraid of you matching up their weapons, but they are afraid to be laughed at, to be made fun of. One of the most powerful functions of the arts is to empower people to, you know, to speak the truth. 
and that's why art is my weapon of choice. Well, my definition of war is W-A-R, actually, uh, is an acronym. It stands for We Are Ready. When I first arrived here, I was very worried because I, I, I ran into a lot of uh, Taiwanese people. They are like, they don't put up an attitude of resistance. Instead, they put up, and they would say things to me like, okay, yeah, if they attack, uh, we're going to uh, uh, resist for two days, then we surrender. I was like, what? What are you talking about? I was so worried at that time. I doubt my artwork would, uh, would change the people of Taiwan, but I think it will raise a bit of the awareness because I think when, when the Taiwan audience saw a person from Hong Kong physically came to Taiwan and settled here and did a bunch of artwork about the struggle of uh, Hong Kong as well as the current struggle of Taiwan. I think they might be moved a little bit and start believing. Because the, in my opinion, the Hong Kong people who are leaving Hong Kong right now, they're political refugee. When I uh, finally arrived into my apartment in, in Taiwan, I was very um, uh, worried, worried about my safety, you know, don't trust anybody, try to stay away from all the Hong Kong people. <laughs> you know, I'm afraid they might gossip or whatever. And I spent most of the time building my studio and my new apartment and uh, basically just working the whole day. I wake up, I go to the studio, start building things until midnight and go to bed. And of course, when my um, wife and my cat joined me, I just felt like finally there's a happy ending. I think diaspora is, or immigration, is a really, really bad situation for anybody. You know, to leave your hometown to and, and, and then uh, transpose yourself into something completely different. It takes a lot of uh, courage as well as planning and facing into this uncertainty. For me, I, I, I experienced that uh, firsthand when I left Hong Kong in 2021, July, uh, by myself with just two luggage. My wife and my one-eyed cat was left in Hong Kong. So the first half uh, year, the six months was really, really bad. You know, I think I fell into a depression. I think escaping the Chinese Communist Party is difficult, but what happened after you successfully escape are even more difficult. A lot of Hong Kong uh, uh, went through this uh, disappointment. Um, they thought uh, Taiwan uh, would uh, welcome them with open arms, but of course the immigration process in Taiwan is very uh, strict as well as doesn't have a refugee uh, or, um, uh, application uh, uh, status. So you know, they came here as investment uh, status. And then after two, one or two years, you know, they, they are running a business that doesn't <laughs> earn a lot of money. So they gave up and uh, eventually have to start their second immigration to United Kingdom, which is like a, a double whammy in terms of trauma. But, you know, for me, Taiwan is heaven. Sometimes I would say that because I'm from hell and I want to cry. I know it hurts me when I, when I know I cannot go back anymore. But I live in the present. Yeah, Hong Kong is still beautiful on the outside, but her soul was taken away and kidnapped and put into this coma by the Chinese Communist Party. Don't underestimate ambition of the Chinese Communist Party. Hong Kong is the first to fall. Next is Taiwan, and next, and next, and next. So stand together, then we'll defeat the giant professionally. Fight for freedom, stand with Taiwan. Fight for freedom, stand with Hong Kong. 
Fight for freedom. Stand with XX. My weapon of choice is art. And I know art will prevail.